Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and I work in a charity shop and the other day we had seven boxes of books donated, banana boxes, which are probably amounted to about a hundred and forty so books, of which I only managed to leave with seven? Well, technically only five and then I took two for other people. But I also had a few books that I'd been leaving behind on the shelf, just staring at me, taunting me. So I thought I'd come and talk to you about them. Firstly, we have Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. I have The Thirteenth Tale, I have Balmain and Black. I've read this previously and I said that whenever we got a copy in the shop I was going to buy it. So I did. Basically, this is the story, it is this one. Dead girl found on a river. Two opposing families claim that this girl is related to them in some way. This is less about the tale that's being told and more about the storytelling techniques of Diane Setterfield, who I'd say uses different storytelling techniques within each of her books to enhance that tale. And so I was a fan. I still think that Perhaps the 13th tale is my favourite of hers, but every one of the books I've read of hers I've read compulsively. And then we have The Devil's Footsteps by John Burnside. I think Jen Campbell's probably the person who talks about John Burnside most of all. And the only reason I got this is because it says that the devil passed through a Scottish fishing town. And I'll, I'll read this line. When Moira Burney decides her abusive husband is the devil and then kills herself and her two young sons, a terrible chain of events begins. And I just think it sounds as though it might be a bit dark and gruesome and it's short. <clears throat> then I got Therapy by David Lodge. Absolutely no idea what this book is about, but having enjoyed the picture goers last year, I thought I would get it. So, a successful sitcom writer with plenty of money. So this guy should have everything in life. His name's Tubby, which doesn't sound too good. He's going to go travelling in order to find himself or something like that. It should be funny. If, if it's anything like the other David Lodge that I've read, then it's going to be funny. Um, there might be a bit where I'm a bit annoyed by some displays of stereotypical masculinity. But that's par of the course, isn't it? Then I got Frog Music by Emma Donoghue, and this is because of Katie at Books and Things. The other day um, she, I watched her video where she talked about the predicted five-star reads on her shelves, and I think she mentioned The Pull of the Stars, which I also have, and I might have another Emma Donoghue somewhere, and I've not read any of them, but then I saw that they said it was a highly charged, elegant murder mystery, and I like a murder mystery. So, we'll see. It says San Francisco, a heat wave, an epidemic. Um, and it's got a nice title, although I can't tell whether the star that's been stuck on it is supposed to be on it. Anyway, frog music. Anyone read it? Any good? Should I give it a go? I don't know. I don't know. Then I have Logical Family, a memoir by Armistead Muppin. Or Mopin? Marpin? I can't say that name. Simon Savage has been reading the Tales of the City and talking about them and I saw this. It's a memoir, came out in 2017 and so I thought I'd buy it. Two pound. Two pound. This book was originally 20. I got it for, is that 10% of the price? I failed maths. I had this conversation with my brother last night. Actually I only got a D but you know. Um, so I didn't technically fail, um, but I didn't do well. I can count bread though, as long as I know how many slices of bread I've had in a day, we're okay, we're gravy. But Logical Family, a memoir, and this is about him sharing his candid search for his logical family, um, the people he can call his own. Then we have the three books that I've been saving for a while. Firstly, I put aside A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Towels. So years ago, when The Rules of Civility first came out, I owned that book and never read it, so donated that to a charity shop. 
but have heard good things. And Joy from the writers group just read or uh, read both of Amor Towell's books, Rules of Civility and The Gentleman in Moscow, and then in December read The Lincoln Highway, which is the whole reason I bought that book. And so I thought that I need to give them a chance. Uh, so here we have Count Alexander Rostov, um, escorted out of the Kremlin and has been put under house arrest indefinitely. Can a life without luxury be the richest of all? I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know if I can read this book because the font is so tiny. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I won't even read this copy. Maybe I'll take this back and look on Borrow Box and see if it's on there, just so that I can read the flaming thing. Then we have The Friend by Sigrid Nunes. Um, I've seen this around for ages. So someone's friend has committed suicide and left them with a the dog. It was the dog. It was the discussion of bereavement and the possible wry elements of this story that had me getting it. <sighs> and then I got Summer Water by Sarah Moss. And I don't know whether I'm going to read this. Basically, when I read Ghost Wall, I think it was two years ago now for the Booktube Prize, that book was such that I ended up in a state of depression for about two weeks afterwards based on events in that book and memories that they had evoked for me. So I didn't think I was going to read Summer Water. And I mentioned that at work because this book got put aside for me to read by the other person who sorts the books because he saw it and thought that it would be of interest to me. Especially since this one has blurbs by Jesse Burton and Hilary Mantel. And I explained the situation to this person of what Ghost Wall had done to me and how this was supposedly a bit similar. And he said if I'd had such a reaction to Ghost Wall, surely that means that I should go back with Summer Water uh, because it shows that the writer is capable of evoking emotion just through the their prose. I am still wary of doing that, and I'm still wary of reading it, but we will see if I pluck up the courage to have a go at reading Summer Water by Sarah Moss. Uh, this one is uh, Scottish Cabin Park, 12 people, and rain, a lot of rain. And they're all the books that I got for myself, which, you know, not really that many. And I don't have to read them all straight away, which is good because I've still not read the books I got for Christmas. And I'll show you the ones that I have got for other people. My friend Charlie or Charlie Brooke asked if we had any Isabella Lende and this woman had got three. So I've got her The Japanese Lover, which I believe I tried and had to return to the library years ago unread. But I hope that Charlie enjoys this. And then my sister, weirdly, has started reading at Christmas just for a book. And so I found a one. And then she finished that on Boxing Day and asked for another one. She's finished that. And over the last eight weeks, I believe that she's read four books. She just had, what was that Kylie Reid one called? Such a fun age. She's just borrowed that off me, um, as well as a few books. I can't remember them all. But she likes a thriller in the style of How to Get Away with Murder. So I've got her Nine Perfect Strangers by Leanne Moriarty to see whether she'll like that. I just feel like I'll just t tell her that Reese Witherspoon recommended it and um, see how she goes on. Personally, I prefer it if she just went and read and then there were none because it feels like this book is just like and then there were none. But considering Leanne Moriarty is probably writing in the style that my sister will like, then I'll give her that. Let's see how she gets on. She could hate it. I'm trying to remember the other books I gave her. Uh, so she had a book that was a, written by a poet after her dog died and the relationship with people and dogs walking. I think it was called Undertow, she had. Underbelly, that was what that one was called. Anyway, it doesn't matter. My sister's been reading for a few weeks. I don't know how long it'll last. Probably when we get into spring and summer and she's able to go out walking more, then it'll all stop. But for now, She's asking me to find her books, and luckily I've been able to find her ones that she's liked. Anyway, them's the books. I'm aware that I didn't really talk about them much in this video. It might be a bit all over the place, but who cares, really? Who cares? Not me. I've got books, and I'm talking about them, chatting about them, bragging about them. 
I, if you've read any of these books, uh, which would you recommend that I start with? Would you recommend any of them? Do you think any of them are absolutely terrible? Do let me know. Uh, let me know why you think they're bad. If you think they're bad, let me know why you think they're good. If you think they're good, I hope that you got something out of this video, even if it was just something to watch in the lavatory. And until next time, that is all.